Hello and welcome and in today's video I'm going to share with you the top 10 creatures which you need for the island. So let's get into it. In at number 10 is the Deodon, and there is no doubt that this is one of the most useful creatures on the island, namely for its bossing abilities obviously this isn't going to be the creature which is going to defeat any kind of boss it does not have the melee damage to do that but if you level up this thing's food stat like absolute crazy and then you can use this thing to heal up your dinosaurs in the boss fight which is a very very useful thing and especially because there's no things like stars on the island yes you can transfer but all the creatures on this list do natively spawn on the island so don't expect any others the deodon is pretty much your only option out there and its ability is just so good and it is so easy to use the only real downside being the amount of meat it consumes and you're going to need to really really pump that hunger but it actually isn't too bad and it is definitely worth it in at number nine is the basilo and this creature is pretty much your best bet for doing any kind of cave runs which you'll find out there obviously underwater ones this thing is not a land creature and i think there are two underwater caves on the island one of the artifacts being used for the megapithecus and one of them being used for the dragon i'm pretty sure there's only two yeah there is only two underwater caves and the basilosaurus is going to be extremely useful in all of those cases it has the damage to deal some of a fight yes it isn't going to stack up to the mosasaur but the fact that this thing is immune to electric eels and jellyfish and all those things makes this one of the most safe creatures to take into the ocean as most of the threats are now just not even able to do their main abilities the only thing you really have to take into mind is the fact that they have a depth limit but as a nice little bonus these things will also passively make oil Next up, we have the Uteranus, and again, compared to the Daedon, the story is very similar. This is a great boss creature, which I think is highly essential for the island, and it is useful on all three of those boss fights, and it definitely is one which you'll want to use at some point, 100% as obviously this isn't going to deal the damage in the boss fight although you could use uses for that that's not really their use case and they're not going to heal up the creatures because that's the daedon's job this thing will buff up all of those creatures with its all famous courage roar and courageous you can also be if you drop a quick sub on the channel it is always greatly appreciated but it also does have the fear roar as well which isn't particularly useful for bosses due to the size limit on the fear roar but if someone's trying to raid your base in pvp on a tyranodon then you can use the fear roar if you have a U tyrannus on you and they will have no chance in raiding you or scouting your base out whatsoever good pvp tip if you didn't know that already in at number seven is the aloe and this creature is a really really great entry level carnivore on the island and you may get somewhat angry with what i've put in the number two spot if you know me already you'll know what's in that spot and you might want to put the aloe in the number two spot and the creature which is in number two in this spot and that is totally fine you can form your own opinions on these dinosaurs this is just my take as albeit the aloe is an amazing creature inflicting a great amount of bleed damage and having a very very useful pack buff it just isn't my go-to carnivore of choice as it is a little bit too out of reach in terms of the level in some ways of when it is unlocked as it is a much much harder tame than the other one that is on this list obviously and also i kind of don't like the size as much i prefer those smaller carnivores i just feel like i have a little bit more protection and albeit the aloe is much more powerful than the creature which shall not be named which is obviously in the number two spot 
the aloe is just, I don't know, it's just not as appealing to me in a lot of ways. But I will definitely say that it is a truly amazing creature, which if you get the chance to on the island, which everyone realistically should, and especially on ASA, as they are so easy to tame with the new baby dino mechanic, you really can't miss out on taming a pack of aloes. Remember, pack size is always three, so if your pack aren't working, if you only have two aloes, get a third one and that pack buff will appear. Next up on the list, we have the Rex, and this is pretty much your go-to boss creature which you can use on the island. Although in the honourable mention section of this video, there are a couple of other creatures which are great boss creatures, but which sadly didn't make it on my top 10, but they may have made it on yours. Either way, back to talking about the Rex. You can kind of tell why this is such a great boss creature. It is a big hunking carnivore with great big teeth and a lot of power. And compared to a lot of other carnivores, I feel like I'm saying a lot, a lot, just did say it twice in a sentence there. But either way, compared to other carnivores, this thing's health is actually way higher than loads of the other options, making it the ideal boss creature for you to go with, as it is just such a balanced creature. While yes, it isn't the carnivore which deals the most amount of damage on the island, which is still allowed into bosses. The Giga I'm not counting here, as the Giga is sort of in a different league as a carnivore. But in terms of things like the Spino, yes, it will deal more damage, but its health is a lot lower. So the Rex is usually the go-to, and the Rex is significantly easier to tame. And its saddle also doesn't require silica poles to craft, which can be a very very big annoyance, although at that stage of the game it isn't too much of a hindrance, it still can be a bit of one. In at number 5 is the Thyla, and there is a lot to say about the Thyla, and this creature is just so, so good at so many things, and it is actually one of the most versatile art creatures in my opinion. I've just done a top 10 on that recently, so if you go look on the channel, you can see that top 10 if you're keen on it. And also, in terms of the Thyla's abilities, obviously apart from it just being versatile, this thing is a really, really great climber of all things. You saw it climb redwood trees there, but it can climb any kind of wall or vertical surface. Although meshing and meshes is a big, big glitch on ASA at the moment, so you can get yourself into some pretty sticky situations with terrain, and even fall through the terrain if you know that's your thing. But you know, ASA is still an early access game, they could have definitely worked on it a lot more though. But in terms of its other abilities as well, it isn't just a really great travel mount, although it is a great use for it, it is also a really great carnivore, sadly not being allowed into boss fights. But I guess we have the Deinonychus on Valguero, if you want a boss creature with kind of similar abilities to this, as that creature can also climb, but it is allowed into bosses, and in my opinion, it is better than the Thyla, but that doesn't spawn on the island, so therefore it is not qualify for this list. But the main reason for its great attack is obviously that bleed ability which it has. Barely any other carnivores have this, which kind of doesn't make sense considering what they're doing and then literally ripping right into a creature. You'd expect bleed damage to occur, but most carnivores don't even use that ability. And the fact that this has it is a huge, huge bonus. Next up, we have the Therry, and would it really be a list without the Therry here? This creature is just so, so useful for so many things, it has to be put on this list. The Freddy Krueger of Ark, with its saddle and locked at level 69. Nice. This thing really, really does pack a punch in all of its abilities. Namely, it's fibre gathering, which barely any creatures can stack up to. Although the Moss Chops is a great shout in the early game. Sadly, it isn't on the list or in the honourable mentions, 
But you know, I guess it got a little mention here with the Therry. But also the Therry is great at gathering berries as well, and so with wood and thatch too. And it is a pretty good meat gatherer as well, as this thing really does pack a punch in terms of damage. And it is the go-to creature for doing the dragon boss fight, as that boss is very very unfair to all kinds of carnivores and it is really nice to have this creature as a backup although the only real downside is sweet vegetable cake is the only way that you can really heal these things up in a quick manner but if you have a deodon with you that really shouldn't be too much of an issue in at number three we have the baryonyx and would it really be a top 10 the iron creatures list without this thing appearing at some point. This is by far the best caving creature on the island and there is no competition at all. No creature can stack up to this thing in all of its abilities. It is just so, so good at caving. It has to be put on this list for all of its greatness in every aspect of caving. It's the right size and it deals a heavy amount of damage with a reasonable health stat, great stamina and great weight to go with it too. There is nothing which could really be improved about with this creature. Maybe apart from it not eating normal meat instead of fish meat and the fact that it spawns in the swamp isn't great. But I'm happy to take those as some side effects for a creature which is just this good. It is almost too good to be true. And it also does have a right click attack in the water which can stun creatures up to the size of a megalodon. And it is a very, very viable solution if you don't have a Basilosaurus for the underwater caves on the island. And this is the creature which I said when I was talking about the aloe, you may be a little bit upset at this being in the number two spot. But I absolutely adore the Kano in so, so many ways it has to be put on the number two slot for me. The also amount of nostalgia I get from this creature is insane. And it has the bleed ability too, and although it doesn't have the pack buff, it is a much, much more manageable size and also... It is a very nice carnivore to control as well, albeit the aloe has a nice turning circle and all of that, but the carno really just feels much, much nicer to control, and in my opinion it is just a better designed creature. And also with its comedically small arms, you have something to laugh about with this thing too, and it just has so much character around it, and again its saddle level being in the 40s or 50s, I can't remember see that it's one of those it's very very achievable for any arc player really if you just put a little bit of effort into the game it is a really really great carnival in the early stages of uh, obviously mid stages as well and you don't even need the saddle to fully utilize this creature you can just have it following you around on adventures until you get that saddle and you could be leveling up along the way to get it ready for when you first ride it a very good very very good strategy actually considering that trank arrows unlock at level 21 and from there it is really really easy to make a basic wooden trap and just trank this thing out you really cannot go wrong with the carno but before we get into number one i have a few quick honorable mentions And finally, in at number one, we have the RG. And really, what did you expect? This thing is an absolute beast of a creature which really does deserve to be respected. And it is a go-to on all maps except Arboration and Gen 1, as obviously flyers aren't allowed on those maps. But on all other maps, you need an RG, really. These creatures are just that useful. They are the pinnacle of metal resource gathering and when paired with something like an Anki or a Dodic which I'm kind of going to tie into the number one spots here as they really really work well together as creatures you have yourself pretty much the best harvesting creature combination which you could possibly have. The RG has weight reduction on things like metal, crystal, obsidian and much much more. 
and Pedro Titanite, like the Anki, which can gather insane amounts of metal, it really is set up for success. And the RG deals a reasonable amount of damage as well, has a great weight stat and a great stamina stat, which is actually why the stamina didn't even make the top 10 list, as usually I'll just go straight to the RG, in albeit the Tyranodon is a good tame, which is great for beginners and very beginner friendly. I always just go straight for the RG and don't even bother with the Tyranodon. And on top of that as well, its saddle actually is a portable smithy, which is a nice thing if one of your metal weapons breaks out on your travels, or your flak armor in cave runs, and also it has a nice little neat regen buff if you eat a dead corpse. This creature is amazing. At number 10, we have got the Galley, and I'm sorry to all Syntac lovers out there, or just Galley lovers out there, or maybe Syntac himself if he's even watching this video, because the Galley is a staple creature for him, but for me, I really just don't like this as a creature. It doesn't really have much use to me, and it is so irritating and annoying to tame. Not necessarily just because it is a difficult tame, it's not actually a hugely difficult tame, apart from the fact that they die so often when taming one. You'll need Trank Darts, and so Trank Arrows, if you use Trank Arrows, you're just going to kill one of these things. But do you have one, their weight isn't actually that great, so you're probably not actually going to be able to get loads of resources across the map at the speed uh, that a Gallimimus can just go at at default, because this is their default speed. Yes, albeit pretty quick, but still considering their health and their feebleness in everything else they really just aren't a good creature and they're not worth the tame whatsoever and their saddle was actually kind of expensive for what they do as well although that doesn't make a bad creature it's just another deficit again which again makes these creatures just even less enticing to use for me you can always just use like the procoptodon which was just there that is a much better creature which is just so much more ro robust in all of its features and the galley just doesn't have that and it, it's kind of a shame because there's a kind of there's an essence of community with this creature with obviously youtubers like syntax but most people kind of know you don't really tame the galley you kind of avoid this creature and it's a little bit of the meme and i was actually going to put the dodo here instead but i can't do that to the dodo can i and also the dodo is really useful for simple kibble so it definitely isn't deserving on the list. Unlike the AI list, which put the dodo right in the number one spot. Definitely would not do that. Next up, we have got the Paki, and this creature kind of had to be here when you think of it. Like, this creature is so unnecessarily long to tame with its its actual tame. It's not a very difficult tame. It's not like the process is complicated. It just takes ages to tame these things, and they're not even particularly useful. They can't even gather berries. And they kind of one use could be dealing torpor, but it's in such a controlled little area, and also it'll do more damage than actual torpor. They still don't deal a lot of damage. Anyway, it's just not worth using these creatures for that use, and they're just really slow and not particularly useful for absolutely anything. If they're a berry gatherer, then maybe it would improve a lot, and possibly I'm being pretty dumb, but I have never been able to gather berries with these things, and I'm pretty sure you can't. If you could, then tell me down below, and my opinion might change these things slightly, but still, I really don't think they're good tames. It's just a waste of a position. Get yourself a parasol that can gather berries, and they are so much of a better creature in the early game. Like, yeah, it could kill a raptor, but it took, like, over a minute for it to do this. Obviously, I had to, to edit the video, so it, it would actually fit in the B-roll, but... It's just really not a good creature, don't tame one. Next up, we have got the Archaeopteryx, and I'm just putting this thing here, partly because its taming food is unnecessary, it uses chitin, really, why? Also, these things spawn in the Redwoods, not the friendliest biome to tame in, and since the Glide Suit came out, they really aren't useful, so I have to put them in the worst art creatures list, as there is absolutely no use for these creatures anymore whatsoever. You just, this creature is useless, you, like... To carry this thing around, it's just a slog, and you can't really get much use out of it. Just get a normal flyer. It's actually easier to get a Tyrannosaur than one of these things, as the biome when you tame one of these things isn't particularly friendly, and a Tyrannosaur is going to be so much better than this creature, or even, like, any just flyer or glider. It's going to, like, wipe this thing out of the park. There is no use for this creature to be in Ark. But also, the cinema crops exist, so this doesn't need to be here. At number 7, we have got the Microraptor, and again, we kind of have a useless creature. This thing can't really do anything in particular at all, and 
Obviously, maybe, yeah, you could use it to knock players off amounts. There are just better creatures like the Desmodus can pick players off amounts. And it still is quite a finicky use case. And it doesn't work very well or effectively. There really is not a huge use for these creatures to be used in that scenario. So they're just pretty obsolete. And again, not the friendliest to tame because they often come in packs. And they're just an absolute pain to deal with. Kind of like Polovias, although Polovias do have a slight use. So obviously, I'm not putting the general Polovia on this list. They they don't need to be in here. Next up, we have got the Oviraptor. Some people might say this is an unpopular opinion to put here. And surely the Archaeopteryx and the Microraptor are less useful than this thing as it kind of increases the rate that eggs will be laid by creatures. But it really it isn't an essential thing to me, at least. And maybe to people that do want loads of them, it's... I don't, I have a feeling it's not going to make the biggest difference. Maybe the Oviraptor is an insane creature to you, but the Terry method is pretty unnecessary and I really don't like these things as a creature. And I think their use case is kind of pretty useless, like the Dimetrodon and uh, incubating eggs, just use air conditioners. I know there isn't any an alternative for this creature, I just, I just think it's really useless. Next up, we have got the Aranio, and this creature is so useless, like its Terry method is a really annoying passive tame and on top of that as well it just really doesn't have much use of a creature i'm going to put the titanoboa here as well as it kind of follows under a similar league obviously not the same tame method as titanoboa's tame method is arguably even worse and that creature is arguably even less useful especially considering the new kibble system whereas before it did actually have a use and nowadays it doesn't just these two creatures they really they don't they can't do anything that are necessary tames and there's no use to these things being in the art game at all. Maybe if the Aranio could climb walls and the um, Titan of Bow was still useful for Kibble, they wouldn't be here on this list, but they're useless, so they are. Next up, we have got the Pego, and I'm going to kind of put the... Well, I actually, I'm not. People might say, well, why wouldn't I put the Ichthyornis here? Well, the Ichthyornis actually kind of has a use. It can gather back black pearls and all of that stuff. So, no, it does not deserve to be on the worst art creatures list. And I've been throwing the word useless around, but this is still the worst art creatures list, not the most useless. But they kind of, they are, in some ways, uh, big synonyms of each other. But the Pego kind of does have one use, which is it can actually gather the bearers. Bearers? What am I? Am I, am I turning to a northerner now? It can gather berries for you, which is actually quite a nice feature for a creature like this to have. Although, you're taming these things on accident, no one's actually going out to tame one of these things the way you tame one. You just put berries in the last slot, your hotbar, and then it will steal them, and then it will tame. So, you can tell how that would happen on accident. And all of my Pego Tames have been on accident, and they're really just not useful. They don't do anything. They just sit on your shoulder and do nothing, and there's nothing that you can really do with them. Again, kind of falling into the worst arc creatures list. It just doesn't... It just, it doesn't do anything, it can't do anything, and it, it doesn't really need to do anything, because it's not really a big part of the art game. It's just a huge annoyance of a creature, and once tamed, you really just can't get anything out of it whatsoever. At number three, we have got the female Megaloceros. The male one is actually a pretty good thatch gatherer, but the female one cannot attack whatsoever, so it has to be on the list. It is essentially just used to breed megaloceruses so then you could get a better male megaloceros for better 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 thatch gathering don't know why my words are not working today but yeah this creature is useless apart from that one thing which is why it's here it is such a bad art creature you can't do anything with it whatsoever it just you can ride it and you can jump around with it and you can move around the map with it it can't attack though like the Diplo, but at least the Diplo has knockback and the Diplo is a good berry gatherer. That gives it some merit. This the, this thing just can't, it just can't do anything. It feels like whenever you press the attack button or something, if you're, you're looking to that, it just feels like this creature hasn't been coded properly. Like there's something wrong with it, but no, there is nothing wrong with it. And if you ever tame one of these things, I don't know why you would, and that's obviously your breeding, and you don't know they didn't attack, well... Now you do, because these things don't attack, so don't tame it unless you're doing breeding. Really, just one of the worst art creatures. Why don't you at least give these things an attack? In at number two, we have got the Compsognathus, or just the Compi. It's called the Compi in art. Don't know why I decided to do the whole long fancy name, but 
Hey ho, and this creature can only be tamed with prime meat, it's torpor, goes down ridiculously fast and once tamed, maybe you could send it to attack something, slightly, really just doesn't have a use, and I'm kind of going to put the Listro here as an honourable mention as well, because it follows a similar suit, again, kind of has a use like the Overraptor where it will buff something from your creatures, it will buff the XP, just again, for me, really just not a useful creature, you you can't get anything out of these things. Right, number one is anything you really tame with the fish traps, as you do tame that creature if you let them out of the fish trap. And I know maybe you might say that's a little bit of a cheat and it doesn't count, but you have tamed it, so it, yeah, it's there. So see the count, save tooth salmons, trilobites, all of those things. The the worst dark tame just by far. Like honestly, you can't use these things for anything. They're just there. Obviously, you can use them. When in a fish basket to tame a shadow man, that's kind of nice. But you can't when they're out in this form, so that's why they're in it at the number one spot. But anyway, that is the end of today's video, and I really hope that you enjoyed this one. Did I miss any creatures? If I did, comment down d below your top 10 worst art creatures, or just your least favourite art creature. And with that, I'll see you all later.